Hi guys, uh, today we're going to start learning how to write quadratic equations from the graphs and there are different forms of quadratic equations. Here's your formula sheet that you can use on the EOCT and this part right here of the formula sheet is devoted to quadratic equations and it has two of the forms that's stated here. The first form is standard form, y equals a times x squared plus b times x plus c. Notice there's no parentheses. The other form on the formula sheet is the vertex form, y equals a times parentheses x minus h parentheses squared plus k. Um, and those are the forms that we're going to look at. We're also going to look at another form which we'll talk about on the next slide. Here are the three forms again that we're going to talk about, standard form, vertex form, and intercept form. And their names depict what you can tell from the formula. All right. Standard form is the way that most quadratics are generally written. That's why they call it standard form. And when it's written without any parentheses, you can take this number here without an X, and that's always going to be your Y-intercept. So when an equation is written in standard form, all you have to do is look at the constant, the number without X, to identify your y-intercept. That's where the graph should cross the y-axis. Vertex form is written so it's easily to tell what the vertex is. Now remember, your vertex is the same thing as your minimum or your maximum point, depending on if your graph is opened upward or opened downward. All right, and these numbers here, h and k, those will be numbers. That tells you where the vertex is. or you may call it the minimum or the maximum point. Now notice there's a minus sign inside the parentheses, so you always have to change the sign of the number you're putting into the parentheses when you put it in there, okay? So H is the X coordinate of your vertex, and K is the Y coordinate of your vertex. So H is the X, and K is the Y coordinate of your vertex. Make sure you remember to change the sign of H. And the last form here is your intercept form, and it's good to show you where your x-intercepts are on the graph. There's lots of different names. They like to call the x-intercepts. They call them solutions. They call them roots. They call them zeros. But all the same thing, they're the x-intercepts, all right? Again, notice you have two sets of parentheses here because you have, most quadratics have two solutions, all right? And again, the numbers inside the parentheses are going to be your x-intercepts, all right? And notice there's a minus sign inside the parentheses. So again, anytime a number's inside the parentheses, make sure you change your signs. So my x-intercepts here would be x equals whatever the value of b is, and x equals whatever the value of c is. So let's take a look at some examples and see if we can figure out which equation goes with which graph. Here's my graph. I noticed that my x-intercept's at negative 1, and my y-intercept is at negative 2. I also noticed this graph is moving downward, so that would be, mean that it would be reflected, so it would need a negative to make it be reflected. If I go to my equations, here, this is my vertex form because it has one set of parentheses. So I know that my vertex is going to be at the opposite of negative 1, so that's positive 1 and negative 2. And my graph, the vertex is not at negative 1, negative 2, so this would not be my solution. The next one is in standard form. All right, so I know, remember from standard form, you can look at the constant, which here is negative 2. And that would be where your y-intercept is. So again, my y-intercept's at negative 2, so this should be my answer. Let's check and make sure it's not the next one. The next question says, this is in intercept form, so it tells me my x-intercepts are the opposite of positive 1, which is negative 1. 
and the opposite of negative 3, which is positive 3. And again, I can see from my graph that that's not the case. So therefore, the equation for this one is y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x minus 2. And I could always check that by going to my calculator and making a table to make sure that my points on my table um, coincide with the points on my graph. Here's another example. I notice here that I have no x-intercepts because the graph does not cross the x-axis. I notice that my y-intercept is positive 7, and my vertex here would be at 2, comma, 3. So my vertex is at 2, comma, 3. And if I go back to my equations at the top to pick out which equation fits this, if I look at my first equation, which is in vertex form because it only has one set of parentheses, I take the opposite of the number inside the parentheses. So my vertex is at positive 2, and keep the second sign, positive 3. And that does match with this equation, so that would be a good choice. If I check the other one, I'll look at my standard form. And in my standard form, I can tell my y-intercept. My y-intercept is negative 2, which again, my y-intercept here is 7, so this definitely would not work. And then if I look at my third case, my third case is intercept form. And that would give me the opposite of positive 7 would be negative 7. And the opposite of positive 2 would be, or negative 2 would be positive 2. And that's not the case here because I have no x-intercepts, so it couldn't be standard form. So the equation here is y f of x equals parentheses x minus 2 squared plus 3. Again, I could check and make sure by going to my calculator and making a table and making sure my points coincide with my graph. Next example, I want to know which equation best represents this parabola, all right? So if I look at this, I see my y-intercept is at 3, my x-intercept is at 1 and 3, and my vertex is at 2, comma, negative 1. So if I look at my forms, I look at the first form, which is vertex form, that would tell me my vertex is the opposite of positive 2, which would be negative 2. Keep the 3. And my vertex is definitely not there, so that's not it. The second one is in uh, standard form, so that would tell me that my y-intercept's at negative 2, which again is not the case because my y-intercept's at 3. And my last case would tell me my intercept form and my intercepts are at opposite of negative 1, which would be 1, and opposite of negative 3, which would be 3. And that is the case here. My intercepts are at 1 and 3. So the best equation that fits this is x plus minus 1 times x minus 3. Again, I could go to make a table with my calculator and make sure my points coincide with the points on the graph. Last example. Using what you know about each form, which equation do you think best represents? So again, I'm going to identify my x-intercepts. My x-intercepts are at negative 3 and positive 1. My y-intercept is at negative 3. And my vertex is at negative 1, 4. So if I look here, my vertex form says that my vertex is at negative 1, negative 4, which this is at negative 4 also, I messed up. So that could be it. All right, if I look at my standard form, my standard form says that my y-intercept is at negative 3, which again is the case, so that could be a possibility. And if I look at my intercept form, my intercept form says that my x-intercepts are the opposite of negative 1, which is positive 1, and the opposite of positive 3, which is negative 3. So again, that could also be the case. And the nice thing about this is if you make a table, and you make a table for each one of these uh, functions, you would see that they all three make the same table. So they're all three equations that represent this graph. So you have different forms that all make the same equation. They would be equivalent forms. And we're going to work at matching these tomorrow in class. So take what you got and let's see how we do in tomorrow in class.